वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग रियली वेल सो लेट स्टार्ट विद आर कोडिंग जर्नी नाउ सो द वेरी फर्स्ट टॉपिक दैट आई एम पिकिंग टूडे इज लिंक लिस्ट मेनी ऑफ यू मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ लिंक लिस्ट एज वन ऑफ द डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स दैट वी यूज सो एवरी टाइम वेन यू पिक अप अ टॉपिक इट माइट बी पॉसिबल दैट यू गेट लॉस्ड विद द वास्टनेस ऑफ द टॉपिक सो आई अश्योर यू that link list would be something which will help you in getting into that pace uh, and the habit of practicing on coding platforms and when i started my coding journey i myself started with link list and let me tell you it was the best decision because when i was confident in link list it was very easy for me to jump on to other complex topics like uh, arrays strings and uh, no matter how vast the upcoming topics were but since i was already in um, that pace and i already had that habit of coding on these platforms so it became uh, quite easy for me to pick on to other uh, topics now let's start with linked list so linked list is a data structure now data structures what are they data structures are the way to store our data in a certain manner now, now uh, let's take an example let's say you have a closet and you uh, store uh, your products like for example you store your bags in a closet right now when you keep your bag bags in a closet you always first of all check like which space would be the most optimized uh, place to keep your bags right so that whenever you want to uh, take out your bags from that space it it becomes easy for you right and whenever you want to uh, put another bag in that place it becomes easy like it shouldn't be very complex for you it should be easily accessible right similarly when you are putting your shoes in your closet you put a different kind of space so that your shoes are visible enough and your shoes are easily accessible for you and if you want to put another shoe in that uh, space it is easily uh, you know uh, a- like you are easily able to insert your new shoes right so the same way data structures also work with data like you always choose a perfect data structure uh, for a particular kind of data so that it's always easy to insert new data it's always easy to access a particular data from that data structure and sometimes if you want to remove certain kind of uh, data from that it's easy for you to remove that uh, particular data from that data structure so these are data structures and linked list is one of the data structure now before starting with the linked list let me tell you some of the things first of all uh, you should be aware of a particular programming language it can be either c++ it can be either java or javascript or python it can be any language that you are comfortable in right and even if you are not don't worry at all for example some of you might not be aware of certain complexities in a particular language or certain uh, maybe collections that we use um in a particular language right so don't worry at all if you are not comfortable with any of these topics do let me know in the comment section and be assured that i'll make a separate video a parallel video for that particular topic so whatever it is that is troubling you whatever uh, doubt you have please do let me know in the comment section and i assure you that i'll always try to uh, make a particular like a separate video on that topic now linked list has certain properties which makes it different from the other data structures now let's see uh, how linked list is different from the other data structures so let's suppose i have a data i have three names ram sham and raghav and they are connected uh, in relation that means ram is the grandfather then comes the father and then comes the son that means uh, if we have the name of the grandfather then with the, uh, with uh, that i should be able to find uh, the name of the father and i should be able to find the name of the son respectively right so that means this da- this data like these three names are connected to each other right so now i have to store this kind of data uh, using a certain data structure now see how linked list will uh, help you store this kind of data now uh, whenever we store something in linked list uh, we uh, like for every unit data we have these elements right and we call them nodes this is one node this is another node and this is another node and we store our data into these nodes now how the data is stored 
Now, every node has two parts. One is the data part and one is the address part. This is the data and this is the address. Now, I'll tell you how address is stored. First of all, let's see how data is stored. So here we will have RAM. Now, um, whenever you store a data into a node, it has an address part also, which stores the address of the next node to which it is pointing. Now, in our case, the first name is Ram. Now, it should point to uh, another node which uh, have has the data part as Shyam. So, we have this Shyam here in the data part. Now, how these two nodes will be uh, linked? So, that is the main property of linked list. Linked list always stores the address of the next node to which it is pointing. Let's suppose the address, the memory address, I am saying the memory address is 01x. Now, this is just a hypothetical address that I'm taking. Uh, addresses don't look like this. And similarly, uh, let's suppose the address of this uh, is something like 02b, right? Now, this here in this address part, it should store the address of the next uh, node to which it is pointing, which is 02b. So it will be 02b. That means this node is now pointing to this node, which was the requirement, right? Like Ram should point to Shyam. Now, Shyam has to be linked to Raghav, right? Now we have a node, new node where the data part would be Raghav. Now we have to link Shyam to Raghav. So if, for example, uh, Raghav has a memory address of something like 07v, uh, so Shyam should be uh, able to store the memory of Raghav in its address part. That means now it is pointing to this node. So this is how our linked list looks like. This is the first node connected to second node connected to third node. Now let's take another example where we have a, a task list where our first task is wake up, then brush teeth and then get ready, right? And now we have to store or we have to make a task list, right? So that we know that what is our next task. So what we will do is we will store the very first task in the first node, wake up. This is the first node of our linked list. Now we have to find out what is the second task. Now for second task, we have another node which will tell us that you have to brush teeth next. This will be the second node. Now from like for reaching from first node to second node, the first node should point to the second node, right? Similarly, for reaching from second task to third task, the second node should point to the third node and the data part of it should contain get ready, like the task name, right? So this will be our third node. And now we don't have any more uh, tasks here. So that means the last, the last pointer will point to null. We don't have any more nodes here or any more tasks uh, here. So this is another example of uh, of a linked list or how a linked list can be used in different uh, use cases, right? Now linked list has two parts. The first part is node. Node, as I explained to you, every single element which stores a data and a pointer, this is the data and this is the pointer. This one entity, this whole entity is known as node. The second thing is every linked list, linked list has two parts. The first part is the head. Now, the first, the very first node of any linked list, the very first node from where the linked list starts is known as head. And the last node, the last node where after which we don't have any further nodes and where the pointer part points to the null node, this part is known as the tail of the linked list, right? Now, uh, I hope you understood the basic structure of a linked list. So let's suppose if we have these three elements or these three nodes, node one, node two, 
node 3. So the very first node would be the head node. This node will point to this node. This node will point to this node. And the last node will point to nothing but none. So this is how a linked list looks like. And as I told you, the last node is known as the tail of the linked list. Fine. So this is how a typical linked list looks like. And every node has two parts. The first part is data. Take the part which stores the data. And the second part is, you can say, the pointer or which stores the reference of the next node. So linked list has certain advantages over other data structures. So let's see what all those advantages are. First of all, whenever you need to uh, store certain data, so let's suppose I have to store five names in linked list, right? Now we know that we have to store five names, but is it that we can only store five names uh, in linked list? No. Why? Because we always have the freedom of adding as many number of nodes as we want. So let's suppose we have five nodes here in our linked list and these are connected. Right. But let's suppose our requirement changes and now we have to uh, add two more names in our linked list. Right. So what we will do is, since this is the tail of the linked list, what I'll do is we will make two more nodes and we will simply point this node to this new node and this node to this new node and then the tail of the linked list, like this uh, tail of the linked list, will become this node, right? So these five nodes were already existing in our linked list and we added these two nodes dynamically as per our requirement, right? This means that we do not have to uh, like uh, initialize the size of the linked list beforehand. We can always add uh, more nodes in a linked list as per our requirement. So this is one of the advantages of using linked list over other data structures like arrays, where we have to initialize the size of the array beforehand, right? And similarly, as we are extending the size of the linked list, we also have an option of shrinking the size of the linked list. So here we saw that we can always add as many number of nodes as we want. Uh, and similarly, we can also remove uh, the number of nodes that we want from the linked list without disturbing the structure of the linked list. Now, as we saw that we can always, always uh, extend our linked list with as many number of nodes as possible or as required, because of course, overall we have memory limit. So until the memory uh, doesn't get exhausted, we can add as many number of nodes in our linked list as we want, and we can extend the tail as much as we can. But uh, there is another advantage that we can always shrink the linked list also. Like for example, here uh, we have seven uh, nodes and we want to uh, remove three nodes from it. So what we can do is we can remove these three nodes and then this node will point to null. This is the last one. This will point to null and this will become our new tail node. And the head node will remain the same since we are since we are shrinking our linked list in this direction. So the head node will remain the same. But also, we can also shrink the linked list from this direction. How can we do that? Let's suppose I will remove the uh, like I want to remove or shrink the linked list from the head side. So I'll remove this node. And now this will become my new head. 
So this is one of the added advantage of linked list that we can always shrink the linked list from both the directions, from here also and from here also, as long as we have uh, nodes in our linked list. Now there is um, another advantage of using a linked list. As I told you that uh, we do not need to initialize the memory uh, before uh, beforehand, right? We can always add uh, as many number of nodes uh, that we want uh, dynamic, dynamically. But uh, as there is advantage uh, to it, there is also a disadvantage to it because uh, in linked list, we not only store the data part, but with every node, we also have to store a pointer, or you can say we also have to uh, store the address of the next node to which it is pointing, right? So this part adds up a little bit to our memory because uh, if you know about arrays, in array, we do not need uh, any special space for uh, adding anything else, right? So as in case of the array, we only have to store the data part, right? Like, uh, for example, this is integer. This, uh, we have to store integer in this. So one, two, three, four, and five. Let's suppose we are storing five numbers in an array. So we only have to take care of the data part. That means, for example, if an integer is taking, uh, let's suppose it is taking two bytes. So that means uh, we have how many number of uh, elements? Five. So it will take two into five, which is 10 bytes. Right. But in case of a uh, linked list, we have to store the data as well as we need to have uh, some storage for storing the address of the next element also. Right. So this uh, adds up a little bit to the uh, memory part of uh, our uh, single node or you can say a single element. Otherwise, uh, overall, if you will see, so linked list always had an advantage that uh, it takes less memory overall. Right. So uh, we have advantages, also we have disadvantages. So there are always uh, these trade-offs whenever we use uh, any kind of data structure. And like we need to decide which uh, like data structure we need to use uh, depending on these trade-offs. So this was just the introduction of linked list. And we have a lot more things to be covered under linked list. Uh, next, we will be uh, taking up uh, what all operations we can perform on the linked list, uh, such as insertion, deletion, and accessing any particular element in a linked list. Um, also, uh, like if you are, if you have any kind of doubt in a certain concept or in this video, if you want me to explain a certain thing uh, in more depth, you can always put down in the comment section. And I'll always uh, like try my best to uh, upload a separate uh, video for that particular topic. Also, my videos are mostly in English, but if any of you uh, is having any um, difficulty in understanding the video, uh, please let me know in the comment section. So that was all uh, from my end today. Um, keep learning and keep exploring. We'll meet in the next video. And if you're liking the content of this uh, video, if you're finding it relevant enough for you, so please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you.